So it's now Friday over here, and I have to say I'm not feeling the most ambitious or productive. It's one of those days where I guess it's just the end of the week. I've been going hard, hard, hard since last weekend. So needless to say, here I am back with Project Come and Take It and did a lot of, I guess, progress in general in terms of the motor, um, transmissions in the car, you know, the five-speed pedal swap is pretty much done, which I will follow up on those few last button up things because I know a lot of you guys are wondering, okay, well, you got the pedals in, what about the rest of the things? Transmission tunnel, neutral safety switch, clutch cable, all of those things. But today, I'm just kind of jumping around from task to task, trying to be productive and just trying to like get myself in a groove. All right guys, small engine bay update here. I actually went ahead and prepped and painted up the top part of the firewall in the engine bay. And you guys might be like, oh, why didn't you just paint the whole bay? Well, the reality is that was the worst part of the whole engine bay because there was all those runs and some of the paint started to peel and the way that the original uh, vacuum tree was mounted kind of left for some spots and discoloration and stuff like that. So because I had all that stuff off anyways, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give that a quick coat of paint. So scuffed it down with a scotch pad, wax and grease remover, quick little coat of primer, some white paint, some clear coat, and that's it. I'm not going down the rabbit hole of doing the whole bay and everything else because this is gonna be a driver. The paint isn't perfect. It'll look the part for the 30 minutes I have invested in there. It's gonna look really good. And the reality is it would have taken substantially a lot more time if I wanted to do the whole bay, you know, pull the caster camber plates off and remove all the wiring and get down in there. And realistically, once everything is put back in the bay and the rest of the stuff's all cleaned up, it's going to look really good. And in the future, when somebody else, because it won't be me, owns the car and they're going to want to repaint and redo the whole thing, they can deal with the rest of it then. So this goes to show... If you have OCD or you're concerned about the rabbit hole, you need to give yourself hard stops. You need to just say, okay, this is what I'm willing to do. This isn't what I'm willing to do. Now, when I say that, it doesn't mean half-ass things or, you know, don't change the gaskets in the motor, especially if, you know, stuff like the rear main is leaking and just jam it in to try and sell it. I, I wouldn't do that type of stuff. Um, this was just one of those things that, I know once that motor is in there, it's gonna make a difference. And it didn't take very much time and it didn't cost very much money. So that combined with how the motor is gonna look, to me, was worthwhile. If you guys actually look over here, you can see you got the freshly painted brake booster, redid the wiper motor that was, whoa, 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 almost lost my, my other stuff. But this wiper motor was all over sprayed, so that's been all taken care of and you know the hardware for the map sensor and the, the bolts all right guys here we are and we're just about getting ready to stuff this transmission into the car i want to get it bolted up and on the cross member on its own so that, that way i can put the motor in and i'll be able to wrestle it in you guys might ask why not do the transmission and the engine all in one shot well i'm just one guy and it's easier this way. Plus it'll allow me to hook up the drive shaft and it'll allow me to get under there and mess with the fuel lines. So I finished getting this guy all cleaned up and I just put a brand new throw up bearing in it because why wouldn't you when everything is all apart? And I just want to say one thing. It's really easy for any of those guys out there that have builds that all their parts are brand new and you're putting them together for the first time. Now you might be wrestling some aftermarket issues, which is a whole other conversation but that's not what I'm trying to get at. Clean new parts versus dealing with dirty old parts that you need to clean up. And I cannot tell you how filthy 
of a job this can be, especially when stuff is oily. It sucks when stuff is rusty and oily because then you got like rust dust mixed with oil. And that was sort of like the Dutch number no. five project. I think that I was more like covered in dirt and grime and everything else than I was clean during that entire project. But with that said, this guy was so oily and it's just been like, look at this, dirty rags. This is just to do the throat bearing. Like just absolutely disgusting. I got the pressure washer back out and some degreaser because I didn't really get on the inside here. And I'm still gonna give this one final wipe down just to get everything nice and clean and tidy before it goes in. I'm gonna wheel it under there with the jack and we'll get it up on the cross member mounts and we'll be one step closer to getting this motor installed. All right guys, so time to wedge up our painted up drive shaft here. So that way it's uh, one less thing that we need to worry about. Got this damn exhaust hanging in the way, so to see if I can push it and uh, get out of my way some. There we go guys, we got the transmission installed, the drive shaft is in there as well and all tightened up against the diff. And rolling around on the ground kind of sucks, I'm not going to lie, however, we'll just make this a tribute to all the do-it-yourselvers out there who don't have the luxury of lifts and who have to just jack stuff up and roll around on the ground. This project is plugging away quite nicely. You know, I started last Sunday and it is now Thursday, just to give you guys an idea of where I'm at. I do got to get the fuel lines um, put in here as well. That is, I guess, kind of one last major hurdle in my opinion. It's it's not a hard job. It's not like doing those five speed pedals, but uh, it's just kind of like a time consuming pain in the ass type job. So anyways, I'll get it done. We'll see you guys soon. I'm going to rant for a second because I actually I'm a little irritated about service providers, just in general these days. I swear to God, it's like you pay for a service and they take your money, but they don't actually do any of it until you start following up and complaining and like forcing them to do their jobs. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just me, but that's how I feel right now. I've been trying to deal with the trucking company to get a car picked up and it just seems like it's hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, but that's my problem, just had to rant. I went out, I got the fuel lines off the Rec 93 GT and they are sitting on the ground here. I got the car jacked up and gonna go ahead and attempt to get these things on the underside of the car. And then we will remove the four cylinder original fuel lines, which is really nothing wrong with the four cylinder fuel lines other than the fact that they come out in the wrong location. You know, they come out down at the bottom of the driver's side you know, kind of by the steering shaft and while all our fuel hookups are in the front here. So it's just better to get the proper 5.0 lines installed. And, you know, that way I have peace of mind knowing that I have the right lines in here. I actually grab the right brake lines that'll come off the master down to the proportioning valve. So I'm gonna swap those ones out because those ones are just sort of bent out of place for the sake of getting the larger booster in there. And we can see the motor sitting all pretty right here pretty much ready to go you know i got the brackets on and the crank pulley the tensioner and just got to button up a few things there and we'll be in good shape to be able to plop that in here but i figured you know what i'm going to go ahead do the brake line stuff do the fuel lines so that that way i'm not wrestling trying to do that stuff with the motor in the bay so with that said i'm going to get crawling back underneath this car and see about getting these fuel lines run and hopefully it's not too much of a headache Everything is going good except for the fact the subframe connector is down there under in the way. Uh, luckily they're just bolt in so I'm going to unbolt it, let the lines go where they need to go and then I'll bolt it back on. 
Um, some people would probably just kind of let it go underneath the subframe connector. I'm not going to do that. So it's a little bit more work, but I'll overcome it. All right, guys, that was some dirty work, which I had alluded to before. You know, when you're dealing with old stuff and you're dealing with old cars, you get dirty. So the good news is the fuel lines are run. They're all underneath there. I even fixed a couple things. So right here at the subframe connector, they originally had, so this is the one, uh, the vent tube for the gas tank and uh, the brake line that's going to the back. So they had these run underneath the subframe. I, when I pulled the subframe off so that I could pass the fuel lines underneath it here, I passed these underneath and I bolted the subframe back up, but you can see all of our factory fuel lines are run just the way they would have been. So the next thing we're gonna do, so you can see a pan down there and I got the main fuel line into that pan. We're gonna go back here and I'd actually found, because I was fishing down here for the uh, fuel pump harness, and I noticed that it was spliced into, and a wire that was running all the way up to the front. So, needless to say, they had something spliced in for the fuel pump, but I already kind of knew that based on the wiring near the starter solenoid that I had found. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hot wire the fuel pump. It'll give a good opportunity to run any crap through the lines all the way up to the front. So... hear the pump going see any fuel so maybe the tank is empty and if it was empty that'd be sweet it's kind of sounding like it might be empty so you know what I'm gonna do throw some fresh fuel in here let's see what happens Got up here. There we go, not too bad. There you go guys, I'm gonna run a little bit more through there, then I'm gonna change the fuel filter. I'll be able to hook up that uh, return line and everything in the back is gonna be buttoned up and good to go. I'm not gonna to touch this tank because the tank and the pump it's working and everything else on this car you got to kind of go with what you know and everything on this car would seem to have been upgraded and changed. So I'm pretty confident that everything's going to be okay. And it's a little bit of a gamble with a fuel pump, but it's not annoyingly net loud. It's doing its job. Sounds decent. So I'm going to go with it. Here we are, it's Saturday. So we're one day away from a full week on working on project Come and Take It. And you guys would have seen the motor makeover video that I just released here today. And the motor is now off the engine stand, down on the ground, on a nice little bit of a gangster lean forward. Kind of make my life a little bit easier because now it's time to go ahead and get this rear main seal changed. So we're going to go ahead pop the seal out. I also have a pilot bearing tool that I just picked up instead of trying to fight that thing out. You know, there's the tricks with grease, wet newspaper. I think people have said wet bread and you just kind of jam <laughs> foreign materials in there and, you know, pound a uh, socket extension with, I forget which size socket, and then the pressure will eventually pop the bearing out, but you know what, a slide hammer with a proper um, pulling tool will uh, will save us a lot of time here. So the uh, rear main will pick that out. Another trick is you can drill like a self-tapping screw and then grab some pliers and you know yank it out that way. So we'll see how accommodating it is if we have to get fancy, but once we get these two things changed, then we can go ahead and put our engine plate on 
flywheel, clutch, and then this thing's ready to go in the car. Now that is one dry seal. All right guys, so funny enough, this pilot bearing actually doesn't look too bad and it looks like it's been replaced. You can see where somebody had something on there, probably a big socket when they were driving this guy in. And, and all the needle bearings are in there, there's still some grease, so maybe somebody did a clutch job and did change this, but I don't think they changed this rear main seal. Like this is just so dry, like that coating is gone. On the outside, you see how I had to pick all that stuff out after the fact so it's pretty crazy you can see right here where someone did damage they didn't have a proper puller and god knows what they did here whether they were trying to chisel it out but look at this on the inside here i think they tried to drill it and they started drilling into the crank so not the end of the world it's not the greatest thing i wouldn't be too happy if my crank was drilled but you know, we're just going to have to go with it. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen a lot worse out there. But hey, at least we're replacing the parts, right? There's a lot of guys that just want to slam this motor in. So I need to apologize to you guys in advance because I was going through my footage last night and trying to put a video together on all the progress of the car coming together. And while I realized that the motor going into the engine bay, none of it was captured. So that's my bad. You guys have seen me put lots of motors in the cars. The only difference with this one was that the motor mounts were actually already bolted into the K-member. So I actually placed the motor on top of the mounts while well, got you know, the transmission, the input shaft, everything lined up. So jacked up the transmission. So kind of just swooped it in on a nice angle. Then the motor sat down on the mounts and I was concerned about maybe the holes lining up and all that other stuff. But you know what? It actually went together and sat into place quite nicely. See what happens when we turn the key forward. I heard a relay click, but I do not hear a fuel pump.